Well, good morning, everyone, as we gather together again on this Sunday and we come together for online worship. First of all, some words of greeting. Grace, mercy and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So as we gather today, we've heard some beautiful music again this morning, and uh, that, that music is by the choral scholars of St Martin in the Fields. Uh, they've done it from their homes, and they've put it together, stitched it, I think is the technical term, together to provide us with uh, some music for our services. So it's a wonderful resource, and the creativity that is happening, not just in the church, but across the world at the minute, to uh, make things happen, is amazing and so we should celebrate that and we should use it as a wonderful resource for us as we gather together. Today's service is again around bread and wine and we'll hear some readings from the book of Acts and also John's Gospel. And so we come together in prayer and in worship knowing that there are people here who would not normally gather with us in our church buildings. Everyone is welcome to be among us and to share in this service for as little of it as you want or for all of it. It's entirely up to you and that's the beauty of the internet. When you're bored with me, you can switch me off. So shall we come together for our prayer of preparation? Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. When we come to a service together, we are always reminded of the commandments of Jesus. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You know, those commandments are difficult sometimes to come up to. Difficult to keep in our minds when we're in our day-to-day -day busyness. And so we come now to a time of confession, maybe just giving to God those moments when we haven't been able to fulfil those commandments. But we're also reminded that in baptism we died with Christ, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, we might walk in newness of life. So let us receive new life in him as we confess our sins in penitence and in faith. Shall we keep a few moments of silence as we gather ourselves before God this morning? And so we pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. 
pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And each week we have a prayer that we use throughout the week in our churches and it's a special prayer and it reflects the themes in the service. Shall we pray? God our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now I'm going to uh, rather break with protocol because normally at this stage we would have our readings for the day but instead of having them before I actually do the reflection I'm going to use them as part of the reflection and so for those of you who like me to stick to protocol my apologies however I just thought this had more flow in it if we heard the readings in the context of what I was saying. So as we come to the word of God this morning, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your life in us, for your love for us and for your presence with us. We pray that as we come to you this morning, we might know that life, we might know the presence of your spirit and we might have a deep sense of your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. So in this period of our church year, we always read from the book of Acts. The book of Acts is in the New Testament and it follows the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And it was written by one of the Gospel writers, Luke. So if you like, it's Luke the sequel or Luke book two. It's known as the book of Acts because it describes the acts of the apostles. Luke is very keen to tell people what happened after the death, resurrection and the ascension of Jesus. And he speaks and shares with us the beginnings of a new movement. A movement of people who come to discover the reality of Jesus, the Messiah, the Saviour, the one who came to restore people to a relationship with God. Acts tells of the first apostles moving out of Jerusalem and sharing the reality of the news that they had discovered for themselves. And one of those people who saw what was happening was a man called Paul. Now last week in our reading we heard of Paul who prior to him being called Paul was known as Saul and we heard of Saul standing by watching Stephen, one of the followers of Jesus, being stoned to death because of his faith. But somewhere between then and today's reading Saul has an amazing encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus. And he becomes no longer the persecutor of the followers of Jesus, but a Christian leader, tasked with taking the gospel to new places. He took on many journeys, we call them missionary journeys, and today we hear of him on the second of his four journeys. And he's arrived in Athens in Greece, and he discovers a city full of idols. Paul was never one to hold back about anything. If you read his letters, you will hear that. And so he takes an opportunity to debate with the philosophers of the day in Athens, in the synagogues and in the marketplace. 
and eventually he is taken to the Areopagus, where this morning's reading begins. The Areopagus was a rock that marked an area where a court gathered, where trials were held. Now we don't know if Paul was actually on trial, but Paul, as ever, took his opportunity. So I'm going to read from Acts chapter 17 and verse 22. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully, carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with an inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps reach for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own prophets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Well, Paul is quite a clever man. He draws those listening to him in with a compliment. You are extremely religious. You have objects of worship everywhere. But I discovered one with an inscription to an unknown God. You worship that which is unknown. But I am here to tell you about the unknown God. And then he describes to them the God who is present, the God in whom we live and move and have our being. He tells them that God made heaven and earth, but that he is not distant but close. He gave them breath and they are God's offspring, and that they're called to repent, turn around, to discover that God is close. So he says to them, look to him, look for him. Paul was a man driven by the Holy Spirit, driven on by his passionate love of God and an urgency to share his message with whoever would give him time. Some wanted to hear more, others sneered at him, and some soon became followers of Jesus. And that is what happened on that day. Some wanted to hear more, others sneered, and some became followers of Jesus. To an unknown God. Well, knowing God is very much the theme of today's readings. Our Gospel is some words of Jesus from John's Gospel. So hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, in John chapter 14. And beginning at verse 15. Jesus says this to the disciples. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. 
on that day, you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Jesus is speaking to the disciples at the Last Supper, telling them not to be afraid and giving them instructions about how to be, what to do, what his relationship will be with them. He promises that they will not be left alone, that an advocate will be sent to them, the Spirit who will show them the truth. He speaks of going away and then coming back. It must have been so confusing for the disciples, but then he says these words to them. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. This is a promise, a promise of Jesus. An orphan, a child who has lost parents. And Jesus says, when I go, that will not happen to you. It will never happen to you. You will never be orphaned. Regardless of the circumstances of life, the storms, the death, the separation, the promise to the disciples and the promise to us is that we will never be orphaned by God. This whole passage of Jesus' words is centred on a relationship with Jesus that is close. It speaks of love. He speaks of abiding in him. He speaks of knowing, of knowing God through him and through the abiding presence of his Holy Spirit. Paul knew of a God that could be known and he shared that with others. Jesus assured the disciples that they knew God because they knew him. And when he left them, the Spirit, the Advocate, would come and that the Spirit would abide in them. It all speaks of relationship, a relationship that you and I can have and grow in. And the wonderful thing is, it is never a static relationship because a relationship with love is, in love is never static. It is a relationship that transforms and changes us and in which we grow, not just as Christians, but as human people. It cannot help but change us. Knowing God is a wonderful thing. It is challenging, it is enriching and beautiful. It is purposeful, peace-filled and mind-boggling to know that the God who created the heavens and the earth wants each of his children to know him, to grow in him, and to recognise that they have not left, been left orphaned, and they never will be. And so how do we come into that relationship, into that understanding but kind of deep sense that God loves us? Well, there's very much an image of, in the Bible, of human beings being children of God. And just think about that image. All we've got to do, actually, is like a tentative child in need of reassurance, who walks alongside mum or dad and gradually raises their hand to reach out for her or his hand, and then grabs the hand and holds on, knowing that they will walk this journey together. And that's a picture of knowing God, being reassured by God, but being a child of God, restored to the place that we're meant to be. Holding out a hand of faith to an unseen hand, but knowing that God is present with us and we can hold on to him. And so what a wonderful image that is. It is an image that has changed my life and continues to change my life. And I know to many of you listening, 
it has changed your life too. It's a, it's a relationship in which we grow and we can grow every day as we, we come to understand more and to experience more of the God we know. For some out there who may not have experienced that, well, I'm just going to invite you to pray with me. Those of you who picked up the lit liturgy for today will find on page 10 a, um, a prayer. It's a prayer of St Richard of Chichester. And I'm just going to lead us in this prayer. And if you want to, just place that hand of faith into God's this morning. And just keep it there. And pray this prayer with me. I'll pray it slowly. Thanks be to you, my Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits which you have given me, for all the pains and insults which you have borne for me. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. To any of you, if anybody wants to have a chat about what I've said this morning, just message me via Facebook, uh, find me. Uh, you've already found us this morning, so you should be able to find me and ask me some questions and I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, so as we move forward this morning, we come to a time of prayer. Shall we pray? So as we come to God this morning, we rejoice that we have been called to be sons and daughters of God. And we thank you that you have given us a faith that in you conquers all things. We give you thanks, Lord, for all those who are seeking to live by what they believe about you for all those who are longing to hear your word and do your will. And we pray for all in their ministry and in their vocation, especially those going through difficulties at this time. We pray for all those who are due to be ordained into the Church of England in this summer knowing that that is a difficult time for them. Knowing that there is a period of uncertainty. We pray for all who are seeking to move home, for all those who are struggling at present with a change of job or a change of lifestyle. Lord, in the uncertainty of these times, May we know you more dearly and follow thee more nearly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all leaders across the world at this time. Some of them finding their nations emerging from a worldwide pandemic and beginning to open up. Some who are uncertain about the next steps. Some who fear they may be about to be overwhelmed. We pray for all in their decision making. Whether they are leaders of nations leaders of churches, leaders of organisations and industries. 
leaders of schools, leaders of voluntary organisations. Lord, we all need wisdom at this time and a vision to see beyond the immediate difficulty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for all those who are serving you at this time. And particularly we pray for those who are serving you in difficult places across our world. For those who are serving you in war-torn places such as Syria. For those who are serving you in refugee camps across the world. For those who have given up everything to serve you and to serve other people in dire circumstances. Lord, we pray that you will be their strength in this day, that you will be their healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord of love, be a comfort to the sorrowing today. Be strength to the weak. We offer you to you today in our cycle of prayer all those who work and live in our care and nursing homes, all carers in the community, all those who work in our hospices and are living in our hospices. All those who are working in our hospitals and who are keeping the machinery of our hospitals moving. Lord, we confess before you that we have so undervalued the gift of caring in our society. And so we pray for a continued outpouring of compassion upon those who care. We pray, Lord, that we might give them strength, friendship, life, gifts, love. We pray that they might be sustained through this tough period of their working lives and their living lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for our loved ones departed this day. And Lord, we look forward to the time when we shall see and know, and when we shall know and love, and when we shall love and enjoy you forever, and when we shall share with your saints in glory. But Lord, for all who are bereaved, struggling, with mourning, in a difficult place, almost a vacuum, on their own. We pray, Lord, that they might find your healing and your presence in this day. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we continue with the peace. And if we're in church, normally we would share the peace together by a, by a handshake or a hug or in whatever way we choose to greet one another, even a wave across the, uh, across the church aisle. However, we're not able to do that at the moment. So I'm going to invite you in a few moments of silence to just think of someone or a group of people who you miss and you'd love to be able to share the peace with them in person but you can't. Draw them to your mind and then as we say the peace, offer them the peace today. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. 
Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And so we come to bread and wine and I'm going to share a prayer over it. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right to our duty and our joy at all, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in women and men the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his commands, send your Holy Spirit. The broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And so as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. And so we pray. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation 
and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. The body of Christ. And so we come to give thanks. God, our Father, whose Son, Jesus Christ, gives the water of eternal life, may we thirst for you, the spring of life and source of goodness, through who, him who is alive and reigns, now and forever. Amen. And we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who live his risen life bring life to others, we whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And before I do the blessing and then we'll listen to the rest of that song, um, I just want to share some things with you. Well, last week I talked to you about um, Thy Kingdom Come. So on Thursday of this week uh, is Ascension Day. And the period between Ascension Day and Pentecost, which is 10 days, um, the church, the church of all sorts of denominations and flavours, prays together in an initiative or project called Thy Kingdom Come. And during Thy Kingdom Come, um, I spoke last week about the fact that we're asked to just ask God to place on our hearts the names of five people to pray for during those ten days, every day. And I uh, invited you to kind of knot a piece of string uh, for uh, one knot for each person and last week I had three people um, that I, I decided it was right to pray for and then now I have uh, two more so that's my five I've already actually started to pray for them every day but can I invite you to do that if you haven't already done that on Thursday um, I will do the normal morning prayer at 7 30 in the morning There'll be a service, a short service of communion as we mark Ascension Day. There are other things happening as well during that day. One of which is there will be posted reflections uh, every day between Ascension Day and Pentecost done by church leaders in the area. And we'll show you where to pick those up. Um, there's other things happening on Thursday as well. If you want to know what they are, then just let me know. I've sent a new sheet round, but I'll try and post it on Facebook as well. So it's everywhere it can be. Also, I've been distributing, or others as well, have been distributing these uh, prayer journals for Thy Kingdom Come. Um, they're lovely booklets. They, again, ask you to commit to praying for five people. Um, but there's a lovely image of the Father's love on the front. 
uh, that I've talked about a little bit this morning and some um, things on that theme as well through the booklet. I'll try and get those out uh, this week. If you haven't received one by, let's say, Wednesday tea time, then uh, please let me know if you want one. It can also be downloaded from the Thy Kingdom Come website. Um, so that's there for you. Uh, remember to pray for five people. So there's much happening in this week. Do try and take part in it and engage with this period between Ascension and Pentecost. Today, well at four o'clock they're having another gathering for Messy Church, so that's lovely. And if you haven't been invited to Messy Church and want to be, uh, again message me because I'll have to invite you via Zoom. Um, and then at seven o'clock this evening will be Compline. So can I just say to all of you, have a wonderful day today. Try and take some time out to just kind of pull aside for a few moments to spend some time uh, with God if you can. And so we say a prayer of blessing to all of you. May Christ who out of de defeat brings new hope and a new future fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and everyone you love and everyone you pray for this day and always. Amen. Live in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Have a lovely day day everyone and God bless to all of you.